Good morning, everyone. Welcome back. It's a beautiful Sunday morning here in South Florida. If you have tuned in to the previous video, we're in the middle of kind of like remodeling, fixing up our Mako, 22 foot Mako that we bought. It's a 1976, so it needed a little bit of fiberglass work, needs some new paint. So we're in the works of doing all of that. Um, <clears throat> today we're gonna be grinding down the big fiberglass piece that we put in a couple days ago. It's huge, we gotta grind it all down. Then we're gonna sand down the whole inside of the boat. There's a fly, whoops. Sand down the whole inside of the boat and uh, we're gonna re-gel coat that. We're gonna do the non-skid on the floors. It's gonna be a full day of work. I'm super excited because I want this boat to be done. I want it to look nice. Uh, I wanna be proud of how it looks. Right now it's kinda of rough looking with the paint. First things first though, <laughs> suit's got to go on so this is just a standard Tyvek soup it's so that you don't get all fiberglassy and dusty uh, that'll be really uncomfortable and itchy and it's not good for you as well not good for your skin I'm gonna be putting on a mask too I've got the buff it's kind of gonna protect my neck a little bit because they didn't have um, suits with the hoods supposedly what they told us it Fiberglass Florida was that everybody came in in a panic due to Corona and um, bought up all the suits with hoods. So because of the virus, people are buying these for protection, I guess. Anyway, that just means that we don't have hoods. So hat, buff, I'm gonna hide this hair and we're gonna get to it. We have got our masks on, ready to go. Gonna cover up my neck a little bit more. Here's this very large piece of bow fiberglass that we did that I was talking about. Um, so we're gonna have a lot of grinding to do, a lot of sanding down on the fiberglass. And the reason that we're doing this is so that we can thin it down, make it smooth, make it pretty, and get our paint on it. By removing the rod holders and other hardware on the boat, we can get an even sand job and avoid having to get paint on any of our rod holders, steps, or other appliances that we don't want paint on. Okay, our rod holders out. And now we can sand down this little piece right here. We're gonna be taking all the rod holders out, that way we can sand and paint. We have, we sanded this down, started out with 60. We're about to switch it up to 150 to smooth it out. And then we will be, we did all these too. So all these little spots around the boat, this one needs to be hit with 150 too. Here's our finer grit, so 150. Our goal here is we're going to be smoothing out all the rough patches. That way when we put the paint on, it looks pretty flawless. That's at least the goal. Well, this right here, we're going to put thick gel coat. We're going to do two or three layers of gel coat over it. So we're not trying to make a contender or a CV or like a really nice production boat. But we're trying to make it look as nice as possible. Um, and if you are looking to lose some weight and you want to come help, you can put one of these Tyvek suits on and it's what 9 30 right now it's probably 85 degrees and 90 percent humidity and it's hot yeah it's really hot and we've been grinding for about an hour so far sanding it all down and i'm starting to feel there this is like a sweatsuit really what i'm going to be doing right now is taking all of the hardware off the boat so we got to take off the rod holders we got to take off the footsteps um then what i'm going to do is i'm going to get all of this some of this is ours but most of it was uh, there's a bunch of trash from the previous owner and just junk 
in these little side cutouts. So I'm gonna clean that out. I'm gonna get a leaf blower in here. Taylor's running up to the store uh, to get some smaller rollers. And I'm gonna leaf blow everything out. And then I'm gonna sand down with the 60 grit. Just rough it up a little bit on this previous paint. And then we're gonna be good to gel coat. Okay, check this out. This is disgusting. So, Taylor wanted to leave these on, tape them off, and then paint around them. And I said, no way, because I could see a little bit of mold underneath there, and I'm a little bit of a perfectionist, even though we're not doing this the perfect way, I'm still not gonna cut corners that much, per se. So I wanted to take it off. I didn't think it was gonna be this bad. This is pretty gross. I'm gonna take you over to um, this. This was where it was. This is disgusting. Ew. So glad. I'll take these sunglasses off. So glad that I took that off. So now I have one, two more rod holders to take off. One more of these. These back two, so there's four in total that should be taken off, but these back two, if you can't tell here, are enclosed in, and to be honest, we really don't want to mess with that. So this one's the same way. So we're just going to tape those off the best that we can and just kind of cover them up, make sure nothing gets on them. But for the ones that uh, I can take out, better to just take them out. So back to work. So I have removed everything from the boat. That way I can uh, get the leaf blower in here and leaf blow it out. But before I do that, I just want to point out one thing. Some of you won't care. Some of you might find it helpful. We're going to have to move the boat because if you don't know, oh, it's kind of shady there. If you don't know what a carrot wood tree is, make sure that you never buy one. Let me show you this. are their seed pods. And what they do, two horrible things. One, they drop these little red seeds everywhere, which turns into this nasty orange, what looks like rust, and it's really hard to get off. And two, these things, after they drop the seeds, dry out and feel like Legos when you're stepping on them. Don't buy carrot woods, folks. Let's get to blowing. What's next on our fun-filled day of boat work, you ask yourself? We got a bleacher. I'm gonna coat the boat in bleach because there's a lot of mold, there's a lot of stuff that's gross. Then we're taking it, um, we're dragging it over, towing it over, and we're gonna pressure clean the whole boat. Then we come back, sand, and then we finally paint. Stay tuned.
loud with all the background noise, but we're about to pressure clean this thing and get it ready to paint. Here we go. Get real close. Except it's going to be sanding down the whole boat. We're just going to be roughing it up. We're not sanding it all the way off. Um, so here we go. Here's a shortened version of what took us a little bit over an hour to complete. We sanded down the gunnels and deck. We didn't sand it all the way through the gel coat. We just roughed it up enough to where we could paint over it smoothly. So we just got done sanding the whole boat. We did the deck, we did the gunnels, did these pieces here by hand. We we're using 150 grit, but that doesn't really matter because all we're doing is kind of roughing it up so that the gel coat will stick and smoothing out the bumps. Now we just gotta leaf blow it, get all this dust out of here and we'll be ready to paint. We did bleach and power wash the boat before sanding, which helped a lot. So here goes nothing with the paint. We are now onto the taping process. We're gonna be using one inch tape and we're gonna tape off down here, pretty much anywhere that we want to do because we're doing the non-skid on the deck a different color than we are the gunnels. So we're just gonna tape it off. We're gonna make it look professional and pretty with nice lines. So let's lay the tape. Taping off the rub rail right now. That way we don't get paint on it later. Gonna tape off the rod holders. Speakers. Uh, the, the hinges. Not the hinges. Well, I went to take the hinges off. That way we could paint. Instead of taping them over, it would look better if we unscrewed them all and took them off. But they're all through bolted, and to be honest, we don't really want to get into that right now. So we're just going to tape them off and see how good we can get it. Gotta beat the rain. Yeah, we, we got to beat the rain. It's in this time of year in Florida, especially right now. It rains every single day around like 11 and it doesn't stop. So we wake up early and try to get it done. Uh, yesterday we ended up stopping, we went surfing, it rained. So now we're into the day trying to bust this out as fast as we can. We're gonna do four ounces of black solution <clears throat> per yeah. gallon of paint. And then we're gonna add in, we're gonna make batches of it. That way we can do it all real quick because the paint hardens and dries fast. So we need to kind of make batches and then set them out and then add the hardener as need be. So we just added in the wax to our gallon of paint. Then you gotta stir it up really good. Taylor's mixing it up over here in the corner. And pray it doesn't rain on us. Yeah, for real. Here's our wax solution. Still mix it. And this is what we're gonna add. <clears throat> To our quart. 10 cc's, per, 10 cc's quart. per quart of this stuff. Right here, this is the hardener. Now you gotta be careful because if you add too much, it'll dry too fast and you won't be able to paint it on. And then if it dries too fast, it'll crack also. We started off the gel coat process by painting the top caps and working our way down to the gunnels. After we painted the gunnels, we continued with the white around the edges that we knew we were going to be tracing out as on the deck as a design. We are done painting the gel coat on the gunnels, um, <clears throat> that kind of stuff. White came out pretty nice now this Although we strive to do the best job that we could, we're not striving for perfection per se because we're, we are going to be fishing on this pretty hardcore so we're not really concerned about little tiny imperfections on the inside because it's just going to get dinged up anyway. So stuff like this, this, this whole uh, part was cut out and re-glassed by the previous owner so we didn't really mess around with that much, it's a little bit textury there but other than that, came out awesome. We're taping off everything um, and getting ready to non-skid it. We're gonna be using 
a different color for the non-skid so we want to tape it and make it look pretty right now what i'm doing is rounding off the edges of our tape because instead of harsh square lines when we roll over it with our different color we prefer rounded i'm going to start this off by saying that this is not the professional way to do it we are you know half whatever you want to calling it on this I'm using my skinning knife, I don't have a razor, I'm using a cup to round it. This one I did freehand, this one I did with the cup, so I don't know which one is gonna turn out better, so I'm gonna try one more with the cup, and then if I don't like it, I'll go back to freehanding it. But put the cup here like this, and then I'm just gonna cut around the edge of it. There we have it for our rounded edges. Overall looks pretty good. You'll never see it on a fast moving horse if we made a mistake, so it doesn't really matter. Taylor's taping this off. Looking good. So all of the taping is complete. Now we just gotta get in here and start painting. We are about to mix up our non-skid paint and look at this color. Oh my gosh, it's called Aqua Mist. Beautiful. Okay, so we're adding in the paint. Four ounces of our wax solution. Now we're adding in our sand. It's actually called non-skid. Yeah. Layman's term, sand. And about how much of this did you add? Uh, so far it's half. You don't want to do too much, you don't want to do too little. So this is going to be pretty gritty. The skiff when we did it is like sand sandpaper. Paper. You're definitely not slipping off the skiff. Bumped it up to a whole one. What was the reason for that? More, more grip. So we've got our hardener that we needed to add. We separated it, all of our paint, into quart size. That way we can just rip through them and add the hardener when we're ready. Same thing with this. Uh, we're going to add the 10 cc's of the hardener. Got this for the, we're gonna start up on the top side, work our way back for the transom. Let's get the paint. I think the, that we should do it light to start. If we've already spent the whole day doing it, 20 extra minutes isn't gonna kill us. light coats here trying to get them as even as we can and this color is really nice it's nice and light it's not aggressive but it's also going to help with the uh, reflection of the white that we've got going so we're not blinded out there when we're on the water we did one coat of non-skid throughout the whole boat i stayed and worked on the top side while taylor worked on the deck we ended up finishing up pretty quick because the rain was pushing us, so I didn't get to film as much as I wanted to. As you can see, it looks like I'm about to box myself in, which is exactly what I did. I kept telling myself, don't paint the back, and I did it anyway. It ended up working out fine because we have a ladder on the opposite side, so I didn't have to step in the paint. The top side of our 22 foot Mako is officially done with um, painting and restoration. The only thing that we need to do is a few minor things, but otherwise for the paint job, it came out so good. Let's go take a look.
Here's how those rounded edges came out. I think really good. Rounded here, around our console, and then rounded off back here as well. Now the only things that we need to do um, to kind of finish up our project, which of course projects tend to go slower and you find more things that you want to do, but this is something that's been a pet peeve of mine since we bought the boat. And it is that this right here does not have a hatch lid, so we gotta get a hatch lid for this. Gotta get a handle for this. And then I also want to get a new cup holder just because I don't like this one. Your drinks go full lying everywhere. Um, we gotta paint the hole and that's pretty much it to kind of finish up. So just to recap on what was used today, we did white gel coat for our gunnels and transom. And then for the non-skid, which I wish you guys could feel this because it's very grippy and rough. We use aqua mist um, gel coat. We added in the sand, which I, I showed earlier in the clip, I showed the bottle, but it's a non-skid deck sand. Added that in, went through all the steps, and it looks amazing. I think we're gonna gel coat the hole, kind of going back and forth between whether we wanna, whether I want to wet sand it or not, kind of going back and forth between whether I want to wet sand it or just roll it with gel coat. Not really sure what we're gonna do there yet, but stoked to see how it came out like this. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Thanks for watching. Uh, also remember that not everybody does things the same way, not recommending this way, just saying this is the way we did it. I think it came out great. I'm very pleased I couldn't be much happier. So tune in next time, we'll do the whole. See you then.